In this video, we're going to be looking at finding where a curve and a straight line intersect. So in each of these five examples I'm going to work through, we have a curve and a line. Okay. Now, because where a curve and a line, if they're going to intersect, at those intersection points, the y-coordinates will be the same, as will the x-coordinates. Okay? But I don't want to particularly rearrange any of these to get x equals, because they're all y equals, except for that one. We'll deal with that one when we get to it. So when we've got two that are y equals some function of x, then if the y-coordinates are the same, then I should be able to put one equal to the other. So I can put y equals 3x squared that's equal to 3x plus 6, because the y's must be the same. So 3x squared equals 3x plus 6. And if I solve this equation, this will tell me the values of x that represent the x-coordinates of where these, this curve and this line intersect. So I'm going to move everything onto one side of the equation to put it equal to 0. So I'm going to have 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 is 0. I would then divide through by 3 just to simplify things. This is a quadratic that factorises to x minus 2x plus 1. So either x is 2 or x is minus 1 in order for that, those brackets to be 0. So when x is 2, I can work out the y-coordinate of the intersection by substituting it into one of the two original equations. It doesn't matter which one you substitute into, just substitute into the easiest one. So 3 lots of 2 squared is 12, for example. But I should get exactly the same result by substituting it into 3x plus 6. 3 lots of 2 is 6, plus 6 is 12 x equals minus 1, that's the x-coordinate. When I substitute minus 1 into the first equation, I get 3 lots of minus 1 squared, which is 3. And as I said, you should get the same value substituting into the second one. 3 lots of minus 1 is minus 3, plus 6 is 3. So these are the two coordinates of where the curve and the line intersect. Visually, we have a parabola. That wasn't very good on the left-hand side. Let's try that again. We have a parabola meeting 3x plus 6. OK, so a straight line graph. So we've got 2, 12, which would be this coordinate over here, and minus 1, 3, which would be that coordinate there. OK, and that's visually what's going on. So that's number 1. So number 2. We have a quadratic and a straight line graph. Now, on the note of sketching these, uh, it is useful to kind of visualise what's going on. Um, I would advise it as a bit of practice to do so uh, for each of these. The only trouble you're going to have is when you get round to 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7. You might want to use a graphing uh, bit of software to do that when you get there. So number two, we've got 2x squared plus 3x plus 6, and we're going to put that equal to 3x plus 11. So if I move everything onto one side, onto the left-hand side, subtract the 3x from both sides, and subtract the 11 from both sides to get me minus 5. So adding the 5 to both sides, then dividing both sides by 2, and then square rooting gets me the two x-coordinates. So positive root 5 halves and negative root 5 halves. So when x is positive root 5 halves, if I substitute that into one of the two original equations, the second one's probably the easiest, so I get 3 lots of root 5 halves plus 11. And the second coordinate will be minus root 5 halves. And substituting in, we get minus 3 root 5 halves plus 11. 
Okay, so they are written in exact form. There's not really a lot you can do with this. I mean, you could um, rewrite it into a single fraction if you like. If I take this one, then you could write that as 3 root 5 over root 2 because you can break that third apart like so to write it as root 5 over root 2 plus 11 but you want a common denominator so you'd have to write it like that then you could say well that's 3 root 5 plus 11 root 2 over root 2 okay you could rationalize the denominator if you liked multiplying top and bottom by root 2 so we'd get 3 root 10 plus uh, 22 over 2 okay and that would be uh, precisely the same as that okay you might want to try it for that one as well you'll get something very similar um, but uh, at this stage it's not really essential unless you really had to Okay, but it's good to know that we can use our um, our work from previously to do that. Okay, so that was number three. Um, uh, sorry, that was number two. Number three. Now this time we've got y equals two x cubed plus five x squared minus seven, and twelve x minus y equals seven. I have I've purposely not written that as y equals. Now you could rearrange it to get y equals. That's fine. Or you could substitute this into that, okay? So 12x take away y, but y, remember, is 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7. And that's got to be equal to 7. So I want to multiply through the bracket. So 12x take 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7 equals 7. Then I would move everything onto the right-hand side of the equation. I, I want to do that because I'll make um, my cubic coefficient positive. So I'm going to get 2x cubed uh, plus 5x squared minus 12x. And the 7s, subtract the 7 from both sides, and it disappears. So I now have a cubic to solve. But they have a common factor of x, so I can pull that out. Minus 12. Okay. So I now have uh, a quadratic in the bracket that I particularly want to solve. So let's see if we can factorise it. So two lots of minus 12 is minus 24. Two numbers that multiply together to make minus 24, but add together to make 5. Okay. So that would be minus... Uh, positive 8, sorry, and minus 3. So we could write this as 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x minus 12. Factor the two halves, so 2x, x plus 4, and minus 3, x plus 4. So we'd have 2x minus 3 and x plus 4. So this equation becomes... 0 equals x, lots of 2x minus 3, x plus 4. So either x is 0, or x is 3 halves, or x is minus 4. So this cubic meets the straight line three times. Okay? So when x is 0, okay, I want to find the y coordinate. So it would, it would make sense to rearrange this to get y equals. Okay, so if I add the y to both sides, subtract the 7, I get 12x minus 7. So when x is 0, I have a y coordinate of 12 zeros, take away 7, so minus 7. When x is 3 halves, 3 halves times 12 is 6 times 3, so 18. Uh, take away 7, which is 11. And then when x is minus 4, minus 4 lots of 12 is minus 48. Take away 7 is minus 55. 
So they are the three coordinates of where this line intersects this cubic graph. Okay, so let's look at number four. So number four, we've got y is equal to minus 2 over x and y equals 2x minus 4. So if we put one equal to the other, okay, my first step to rearrange this would be to multiply both sides by the x. So minus 2 is equal to 2x squared minus 4x. And then if I move everything onto the right-hand side, I'd get 0 equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Divide through by 2 to make this simpler for myself. Now that factorises to x minus 1 squared. So that means that x had to be 1. So when x is 1, I get, well, I could substitute it into either. y equals minus 2 over 1, so minus 2. You should get the same thing by doing 2 times 1 is 2, take away 4 is minus 2. So there is one intersection point of this reciprocal graph and that straight line equation. OK, so finally, number 5, y equals 4 over x squared and y equals x plus 3. So we have 4 over x squared is equal to x plus 3. So if I multiply both sides by the x squared, I get 4 is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared. Now if I subtract the 4 from both sides, I'm left with a cubic to solve. So in order to solve this cubic, I need to factorise it. Okay, so I'm going to have to use the factor theorem. So if we let f of x be this x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4, if I start substituting in values, I need to use factors of minus 4. So if I start with 1, makes sense? So f of 1 is 1 cubed plus 3 lots of 1 squared take away 4. So 1 plus 3 take away 4 is 0. So, therefore, x equals 1 is a factor. Sorry, x equals 1 is a root. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. So, that means I should be able to use polynomial division here. So, x minus 1. Uh, I need x cubed, so that would have to be x squared. So, minus x squared. I need a 3x squared, so I'd need a 4x squared to combine and make 3x squared. Uh, that would have to be 4x, then I'd have minus 4x. I don't have any x's, so I'm going to have to add 4x to make 0x. So that would have to be 4, and I would get minus 4 there. So that means that I have 0 is equal to x minus 1 times by x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, that factorises to x plus 2 squared. So that must mean that we have one intersection point when x is 1 and one intersection point when x is minus 2. So when x is 1, I have this intersection point at 1 plus 3, so 4. And when x is minus 2, I get minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. OK. So visually, this 4 over x squared, if you remember what that looks like, looks something like this. And we've got y is equal to x plus 3. Now, because there are two intersection points, 1, 4, and minus 2, 1, in order for this line to be diagonal and cross the, the uh, curve at two points, OK, so it looks something like that, it would have to brush the 
brush that curve at one point. So this would be minus 2, 1, and this would be 1, 4. Okay, and that point would be 3, the y equals x plus 3. Okay, and that's visually what's going on with that problem.